About a year ago, I upgraded my travel trailer with a battery disconnect switch, and that has been an awesome addition. Today, I'm gonna to be upgrading that switch to a digital disconnect switch that I got from the VSTM store on Amazon. So this is the switch I put on the side of my lithium battery, which I also added last year, and both have been an excellent addition to my travel trailer. This switch allows me to disconnect the battery when I'm storing my camper or in between trips so that I don't accidentally draw down my battery and it's not ready to go the next time I need it. Highly recommend a lithium battery if you have the money to do it lasts so much longer than a normal lead acid battery. So this is the switch I got that I'm gonna be putting on today. The biggest advantage to this, when you turn it on, it will display the voltage that's in the battery right here so you can quickly see if you need to charge it. With the one I have right now, I have no idea how much charge is left in my battery. And they look almost the exact same size. I'm hoping that I can use the same holes that I used on this disconnect switch. If you're interested to see how I installed this switch in the first place, I will put a link in the description for this video. Today I'm just gonna be swapping these out and I have to add one more wire to this switch to make it work properly. Right now I have the negative terminal running through my switch and that's where I shut my power on and off. So I'll have to run a line from this side to the new switch so that it can read the actual voltage. I gotta start by disconnecting all of my connections so that I can remove the battery so that I can get to the um, screws to get that switch off. These batteries are so light. I cannot recommend them enough. It's been working great. I put this little pad in here to keep the battery away from these screws. This is kind of tricky the way I have to get these loose because the battery was in here and I want these studs sticking out into the battery area. So I went in this way. And so I don't have any good way to keep these from turning. So I put a little screwdriver in there to hold those nuts still. Technically your head should be the other direction. So I just take a little screwdriver and wedge it in here and it keeps this nut from spinning while I loosen it. And these aren't super tight anyway because it's just holding in plastic. Once you loosen it up a little ways you can shove your bolt in and then you can get a hold of your nut with like a pliers or something. Some nuts still sticking in these holes. Get them out. Once you undo it, then this back plate can come off. There's your connections inside. So right now this one only has two, and the new one will have a third one. When you're doing this job, you wanna make sure you don't have the camper plugged in, and obviously you have your battery out now, so you don't have any problems with arcing. an old one off. Now this is the uh, back plate for the new one and I just wanted to show you that it is the exact same footprint. So that is great. That will make it super easy to install the new one. There are several different ways you can mount this. You can use the box that goes on the back like I'm going to do or you can face mount it using that rubber gasket. So the old one was oriented like this and we're gonna have to have this for our wires. So we're gonna put the plates on the new one just like the old one. So we're gonna need a plate here, and we're gonna need a plate here. And then this will go back on here like this once we get our wires hooked up. It's a little bit thicker. We may be able to use the same screws we had or this new one came with long screws. So we'll have to see which one we have to use there. Okay, I'm gonna use this little piece of wire here, head laying around. This switch actually came with one connector, and this is probably one that fits the stud that's inside that connecting switch. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and use it. This is plenty heavy wire. I'm only running 12 volts. Shouldn't be a problem. And that digital readout isn't gonna draw much power. So we should be good. My terminal screw will not fit through this hole right now, so I gotta enlarge it just a little bit. If I was closer to town, I would just get a, another terminal. But I'm several miles away. There we go. Something I just wanted to point out about this disconnect switch. This has to be interrupting the positive side of the battery, and this has to be returning to the negative. Otherwise, the digital readout will not work. My old switch was wired, so it interrupted the negative. So I am having to switch some wiring around so that I can get this to work correctly. I'm gonna demonstrate this. You can see there's no readout coming on there. But if you switch it around where the positive is here and the negative is here, hopefully you can see that. It says my battery is 13.7 volts. So I'm doing some rewiring on my travel trailer here to get this squared away. So I'm in the process of switching some wires around because this negative here isn't long enough to reach over there where I need it to go. So we're gonna put this longer wire on there. In case you're wondering why I have two red wires, one of them runs to an inverter I have right inside here. We can just do that when we're powered off the truck or when we're in a campground and we want more charging capacity. It has an on off switch, so when I shut the inverter off, it's not drawing any power. This one runs the, all the power in the camper. So we're gonna run the positive through the switch now and the negative will just hook directly up to the battery. So this is gonna be our setup here. So I had to get a new wire to make all this work. So this these holes aren't big enough to fit over these. So I'm gonna have to make them bigger or at least one of them. Again, you could just get the right size terminals, but I don't live that close to town, so it's not that handy. So we just have to make it work. All right, there's our connections all hooked up We're on the positive side of things. So now we gotta put this casing back on the back. And then put our bolts back in. So I got the disconnect switch hooked up to the battery and as you can see my readout is working. It tells me I have 13.7 volts. However, if I shut this switch off right now, my readout stays on. And that's because I didn't follow the directions very well and I have my load coming off the wrong lug in the back of the switch. So it never shuts the readout off, which is, I guess if you want to ha always have the readout showing, that would be fine, but the problem is, is this actually draws a little bit off their battery too, so we don't really want that. So we're gonna take this back off and swap the leads so that the load is on the correct side. And it actually does a really good job of telling you this, how this works. I just did not read the directions very well. So we're gonna take a look at the back of this just to show you what I mean by having it wired wrong. So here's the drawing. So the back of this is labeled nice. I didn't even look at this. This says input on it. So this line coming from the battery should be hooked in right here. And then this one says output right up there. This lead should be coming off of this. So <clears throat> that's why we have problems because we have it backward. So we're gonna bring this one across to here. So that's the output. I'm gonna adjust that little wire down there a little bit. So 
sometimes it pays to read the directions. And then this one, going to the battery, is going to go right here. And I think all my wires is actually going to be able to come out the side of the switch now. So that's a bonus. <coughs> so we're actually going to put the front door back on because we don't need that access now, which will weatherproof it a little bit more. So that's good. All right, now we're ready to put this back on, I believe. A couple of these nuts started so it doesn't come off. These don't have to be super tight. Just snug them up. All right, hook our negative terminal back up with the neutral to the switch. And then hook all of our positives back up. All right, one good look over before I cover this up. So you have your neutral going to your negative from the switch, that little screw in there. And then we have our positive side coming from the battery. And then we have our load side going to the camper. I'm gonna test this real quick before I get the lid on and get it all buttoned up. So the switch is off right now. Now the switch is on. So instead of guessing what the voltage of my battery is, especially through the winter, not really knowing, I can just come out here and just turn this switch and see that, oh yeah, we're at 13.7 or 13.5. And um, maybe when it gets down to 13, I plug the camper in and let it charge back up my battery. So this is a nice little upgrade, not to mention that it matches my camper. Uh, it's black like the railings and stuff. Yeah, I'm just gonna get this button back up and uh, get ready for the next camping trip. It's gonna be the video for today, guys. Once again, I got this battery disconnect switch from VSTM. You can find them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below this video. Till next time, guys, good luck with all your projects.